So yesterday I I had a homeowner's experience. My I guess it got really cold at sub zero temperatures and then it heated up and uh the pipe must have broken while it was frozen and then when it got warm enough to melt a pipe burst all over my basement. But I burst a pipe in your mom. <laughs> well, I that changes our relationship. Yep. All right, everybody. Welcome to another installment of uh, Juvenile Jokes and Wet Basements. Um, this is uh, Billy Two Guns. We are no ammunition. Let's get started with Mike Identifiers. I'm back on the sweatpants train, and these ones have camo. And I'm Chris, and I can't see the lower half of your body. <sighs> it's an exclusive right. I'm Lisa, and I'm also wearing sweatpants. Nice. Not camo. Okay. See, I can see your lower half. Thank you. See, this is confusing because I am Genevieve and I am also wearing sweatpants <gasps> that aren't camo. So, I mean, can you really tell the difference? And they're both us now? gray. Yeah. And you're white women with brownish hair. That's sort all of, I can tell. Sort of. Yeah. You sure. both. Oh, no. Those are. You have fingers, Genevieve. And it's you have. Salad fingers. Animated rope. <laughs> <laughs> like one continuous rope for all her fingers rope or phalanges it's a rope of phalanges it's phalanges we can keep it mm. biological i'm jake and for those of you playing at home we have uh, taken to announcing the the uh, our choice in lower garment yes these past several episodes chris neglected to mention he's in jeans and so too am i uh, they seem to be the the prevailing uh winter time choice either sweatpants which is the winner of late, by popular recurrence, and with jeans is a close second. Can we do a challenge? Uh, and and if you're playing at home, um, you realize that you cannot see us, um, but clearly you have nothing better to do with your time. So thank you for tuning Whoa. in to Two Guns No Ammo. So, so the, the 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 crux of this is, uh, I had a, a buddy when I first started the podcast I worked with, and he's like, I have a hard time telling between you and Frank or, or whoever, and he's like, maybe you guys can do a mic identifier so that the listener has something to associate with the voices. And it has, I don't know how to <laughs> evolve to this point where we all mention our pants, <laughs> which I think sort of de defeats the differentiating <laughs> trait. Two <laughs> guns, no pants. <laughs> See, um, 65 episodes in, mm -hmm. we've used... All our identifiers. You know Probably everything there is very, to know about I mean, us. without like putting up pictures of ourselves, yeah. you know, and, and timing it with the mics which or turning on cameras, which, <laughs> uh, no, you don't believe me. You don't want to see this, this, this group. I have two it's not good. I want to know. It's not good. What Especially episode me. number are we on now? 65. It is 65? Okay. you think. Four more like episodes. At the 75th or 100th, yeah. if we get there, we should do... Um, the drawing thing that we did on the first episode that was <gasps> yeah. a catastrophe. I was hoping you were going to say a naked episode. Well, then my second thing was all next right. week we should all try to wear not the pants that we have on today. Like, not Genevieve the type of pants. Genevieve is suggesting we just don't wear clothes. I know what the fuck I'm wearing next week then. Oh, oh my God. God. <laughs> Birthday suit. I swear to God, if you come in in a leotard. Close. Yeah. All right. You win. You um, so before we get into the gaming content, this is somewhat rel relevant. We've talked a couple of times about how to stay, how we try to stay fit as gamers. You know, uh, it's easy to get uh, out of shape sitting on the couch or in Hi. your chair, rocking and rolling on a video screen. Hi. So I'm a, I'm a bigger fella. Uh, I have a big, uh, big build, you know. So the, the BMI, if you're not familiar, it's like body mass index. They made it up in the 40s, I think. And it's like if you're six foot three, you're supposed to weigh 180 to 220 pounds. So for me, I'm like some astronomically morbidly obese number. I said, that can't be right. So I want to figure out what my actual body fat percentage was because that gives me some information to work with. So how much lean... How much non-fat mass do I have on my body and how much fat do I have? Because I can lose all that fat. So I, I did some Googling and the best way to figure out your body fat percentage is immersion in water. And not only is it expensive, but the older I get, the less I like the idea of getting wet. What? <laughs> I don't know why. Not like just being submerged. I feel like... Every year when it gets to pool season, I go... I don't want to be wet. And I go in the pool probably one last time. Considering when I was a kid, I went in every day, you know. I have a lot of ways to go before it's zero. But there was a year I think I went in the pool like twice. It's just, I just don't. Then I get in the pool. I'm like, oh, this is whatever, whatever. 
So that doesn't work. And then I, it's also very expensive. So I Googled around. Bill hates pools. And there's this other thing they can do. They can shoot you with x-ray beams. And they go, oh, there's all your body fat, you fat fuck. And I was like, mm, I don't need that. It's part of the service. I think that's expensive too. So found this thing called the Bod Pod. And it is a pod. It looks like it's out of Star Trek, the original series. It does. You're right. <laughs> it's a big egg thing with a, a sc- uh, not a screen, like a, a glass on it. Because at first I was like, oh, they're going to put me in an egg-shaped coffin. It will malfunction. And then I will be dead. But, but then you're already in, in the coffin. Spot. Yeah. Yeah. So they'll just roll me to the dumpster and that'll be that. Um <laughs> I'm that just not- a prom night dumpster baby. Yeah. Yes. So Genevieve and I ended up going, and uh, before we got in, I almost made a joke. I was like, "Yeah, you're gonna you're gonna have a body fat percentage as high as me, my fat ass." Like I thought I would be funny, you know. Good thing I didn't do it. <laughs> 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 so I get in, and we get in. They're like, "Wear tight clothes. Don't have a bladder full of water. Don't breathe too heavy in there because it messes up this machine." Um, it's like in somebody's basement. They they usually do corporate gigs, but I guess they like sometimes take schmucks like me. And you go in, and it, there was just like luggage all over, all over the back room for their um, corporate gigs they do. And then they have this pod and this machine that gives you your BMR that I'm sure costs fifty dollars. It's just a thing you breathe into. It's all hocus pocus. I don't know. So anyhow, we sit down and we go in the machine. They're like, all right, you're not even going to hear it when the air does the thing. But you get in and it goes. Yeah, it's got a sick ooh, beat. Ooh, 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 sick little beat. As it's, it's like pumping the air out yeah. of where you're sitting. Yeah, and it takes like 40 seconds. They do it three times. Uh, and then you get out and they print out the results and they didn't tell me. And so uh, they calibrate it to this steel can and it comes out and you go in. And then they calibrate it again and Genevieve went in and did her thing. Um, and I don't know if you guys remember, but years ago somebody hacked into... Uh, these digital scales that you could buy on Amazon or something. And when people weighed themselves, it was supposed to give body fat percentage and other information. And would just be like, you fat fuck. <laughs> <laughs> and people were like, oh, I hate this scale. <laughs> <laughs> Not like this isn't a number. Yeah, the just... manufacturers were like, what? we don't know what happened here. And it was, you know, a team of goosters. I'm sorry, ma'am. <laughs> so I was ready to pay. I paid $70 for this thing. It was like $70 for the first one. 65 after and then 60 if you give a, a a can of food i don't know this place is different anyhow i expected to get out and have the machine be like you know printing and then just go results <laughs> <laughs> that's what i was ready for so i did it and um i'll give you guys i'll let you guys take a guess what do you think my body fat percentage was percentage of so i i weighed 300 pounds on the nose out of that what percentage of pounds were just pure body fat? I'm 6'3", 300 pounds. 200%. Two, Whoa. Okay, that's pretty close. Wait, what's, what's the normal? How does that even work? I'm trying to remember. Is it around? He weighs if he, more if you're fat a male, than he does weigh in real life. If, if you're a male and you're uh, in the single digits, it's when you get abs, right? Yeah, I know it's pretty like low. Six to nine percent or something like that. Is, is abs. In the in teens, abs. Is, is pretty fit. In your 20s is when you start to get a little pudge. Unless you're me. And you you obtained the superpower of finishing an entire box of Cheez-Its in one viewing of one movie. <laughs> <laughs> a whole movie? One whole movie. Come on, Lisa, let's get another I know, I'm trying to think, but I feel oh like God, I'm getting is... mind games Remember. played on me because I feel like you're maybe doing the story and then it's going to have a different result than I would think. And... 35%. Oh, my God. See, I was going to say Good guess. but I just don't remember now. Pick a number. 27. Real number, 32.7%. Oh, damn it. Oh, shit. Oh, shit. I was closest without going over. Yeah, yeah, you win prices right rules, but I win proximity rules. Yeah, let me let me tell you let me tell you something. Oh, you didn't 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 hear anything. I didn't hear you. I didn't count it because you were there. Yeah, and I just don't remember it. Um, (laughs) yeah, let me tell you something. That was a big bit of a wake up call because I was like, oh, I'll probably be in the low to mid twenties, whatever, and like thirty two point seven. I have like 98.1 pounds of body fat on my frame. And at first I was like, oh, I'm disgusting. And then I thought about it. I was like, oh, 
I was wondering if I could get down to my high school weight, which was 240. I have 100 pounds of body fat. Yes, I could get down to 240. I could get down to 220 and then still be like 10% body fat. So it gives me hope. Um, Genevieve went in the machine afterwards. And uh, what did you get? See, I don't remember either. It's like in the same range. Like I, I was 32.7 and you were like 33.2. Yeah. So it's a good thing I didn't roast her for in the fantasy world, having the same amount of body fat as me, same percentage, because then I would have looked like a real dumb dick. <laughs> yeah, I mean, pretty close. However, it's normal for women to have higher percentage body fat, just the way that they're built and like still be can, the same level of healthy. So there's a little chart on there and it's like ultra lean, three to 5%. That's not good for your health. Lean, six, 9%, blah, blah, blah. The, like <laughs> the relevant healthy. ranges for us is Genevieve is in the excess fat which i term as excessively fat excess fat range and i am risky fat <laughs> bad for life no it's not yes it is it's is like, it a really say that bad for health yeah, yeah, bad, bad, for, for, life. bad for life so See, for I, your health ris risky sounds cool at least like i want to know yeah. mine now i'm playing fast and loose with my heart that's that's a game everybody likes to play Wait, it was 70 bucks yeah. yeah, but you go in like, I mean, how much weight are you actually going to lose? Because if you think about it, you go in, I know I have 100 pounds of fat. And my big thing was, I'm, I'm probably not going to lose, you know, just 80 pounds of fat or whatever and do nothing. I'm going to hit the gym and try mm -hmm. to become a meathead. So then I'll be, I'll put on muscle mass. So I'll lose so less the, weight, but I want to see if my body fat percentage changed. Right. I know, but, We're worried I, about but the ratio. it's $70. Well, you uh, yeah, aren't there cheaper methods of getting, of, of obtaining the same information? Yeah, but the, the one is they send an electrical shock through, electrical, it's not a shock, it's like a pulse. It sucks in accuracy. There's the caliper one. That one sucks. It's just, I wanted accuracy. I'll get it done once a year. You can also do it like if you just want to do a bunch of calculations and measure your... Yeah, you can measure like, stuff. And you measure your waist, your hips, your... I don't know if you do your thigh. Yeah, that's like all. That's all gobbledygook. But yeah, that could be all muscle, or it could be fat. Like it's. I mean, I don't know. I guess I, I want to do it now. Way as well. Just do it. I want to do, do it. it. <laughs> just save up the seventy bucks and go do it. Pay for it. Anyhow, do get it. ready for not good news. That's all I'm saying because it was. Uh, I know. Now I'm scared. My number's gonna be like. <laughs> I think it's just gonna be 80%. a little higher than you expect, but yeah. I'm sure you're not gonna be. You're you're gonna be lower than Genevieve and I. I'm I wonder sure. if these guys are getting kickbacks know. from local gyms to tell people that they're more fat than they actually are to get them to go to these local gyms. I'm gonna tell you this girl, who she's like, what makes you come in today? Would you like? Are you guys like on a diet? Are you trying to get a baseline? Are you looking to lose weight? And I was like, those are all, all kind of the same thing, but uh, sure. Well, and, she did. <laughs> she was like, well, we, sometimes we get people in here who are like bodybuilders. You don't need to defend athletes. her. <laughs> <laughs> and so i would like gave an answer and she sort of stumbled over herself my point is i don't think she had it together enough to be working on this like uh kickback system where that judge was sending kids to jail for money you know what i mean <laughs> all right okay anyhow leesler America. here's what we'll do hmm. uh you go get your thing we'll all do closest uh closest to it and the winner uh everybody buys them a drink so if you guess your number right we'll buy you <laughs> Make a game. Oh, if, no, but wait, if what? she guesses wait. her number right. Moving on. Okay. Um, yep. <laughs> it's not interesting. We're not going to spend time talking about it. Okay, so. Uh, Is that the standard now? <laughs> Jake, you want to hit us a little bit about this uh, super hot there? Super hot. Super hot. Is that what it does in the game, super or are you just remixing hot. this? Hot. Yes. Uh, it's been out for a while. It's an indie game. Uh, a lot of crowdfunding I yeah do it. I, I what i recall is that it just had a really interesting like movement timing mechanic yeah um so it's a first person shooter slash uh like b essentially a puzzle game in that uh time time moves a little bit when you are standing still you can watch a bullet crawl through the air but it speeds up as you speed up or as you are just moving around the room or if you go to fire your gun or throw your depleted weapon or attempt to do one of those things it inches time forward a little bit and of course actual movement speeds it up to full speed uh and you're you're just popped into these rooms red dudes appear like polygonal red dudes in all white environments um for the most part 
and they'll have bats, swords, or some type of firearm, and you have to kill everyone. It is, and you die, everyone dies in one hit, uh, with the exception of if you're punching one of the red dudes, you have to hit them like two or three times, um, and they can punch you dead in one hit. So, uh, but yeah, um, it, it is challenging. It is, uh, it's, it's chaotic and, um, really entertaining. And there is a, um, you know, in in the campaign as it is, there isn't very much, uh, there's no voice acting really. Uh, there's like the, the dialogue sequences are like chat sequences um doesn't tell you a whole lot about like the world that you're in or anything it's it's just the super hot is a game as part of the story in the game right it, it is a game that you pick up and play and uh it uh it, it it's like a dystopian like kind of it's not really a game and you get sucked into it and addicted and you are like you know assimilated basically uh and it's uh it, you don't think you're a polygonal person you what you, you 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 aren't and then you you're ostensibly someone playing the game mm. and then you get essentially addicted to the game and the game starts talking back to you tries to tell you to leave and you don't mm. and then it's like makes you its bitch and you wind up i'm not i don't want to say too much more yeah don't swirl but it. it's uh it's it's you get married right no oh. please don't guess uh <laughs> <laughs> you're terrible at it <laughs> but it, it's uh, my best. The story isn't isn't you know like this 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 really revolutionary thing. It, it's a sci-fi plot that's been done before and boiled to its most basic components for what is really a pretty basic game. Um, you can I beat the story in one afternoon, um, but you can replay it. There are all kinds of race and challenge modes and endless modes and and. Um, it's it's a lot of fun it's it's you you need to like play it slowly and take your time and like look around constantly to see where the dudes are spawning in from so that you don't get shot in the back all of a sudden when you're trying to do something fancy with the dude in front of you uh happens a lot you will die a lot um but you reached it's just one it's just hit r to restart bam you're back in great um there are two versions of the game there is a VR and a non-VR. I, of course, don't have VR. Uh, and they're the same game, except for the VR version, from what I've heard, um, the, 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 the story bits are, are... You actually get to be in the... in your character's human, like, view. You can, like, like peer out your apartment window and shit, and there's, like, more to that. Whereas in, in the version of the game I've played... Um, you are it's, you, your only interface with it is while your character is logged into the game. You're just looking at menus and you're reading chats, and they're not they're not over long. Um, but uh, and you actually have to manually do shit too. Like like for the chat sequences, like you'll just be sitting there looking at a cursor waiting for you to type. It doesn't record what you type. You just need to hit any keys at all. Well, that's pretty neat. The, 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 these, but but you do that and it types out whatever it's going to say, mm-hmm. and 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 the storyline progresses and. Um, as the game is like trying to like quote unquote take you over and like make you obey it, it'll do things like it'll do other things like there, there's a level where um level quote unquote it's it's very and many of the levels are extremely short um but there are a lot of them um like this one you're just kind of in like a recessed pit there's uh, like, like a barred grate over you and these red dudes are on top you have no weapons you have no way out and they can just aim down at you and fire and um, again, there's no voice acting. So every time, like the antagonist, which is basically the overarching you know, whatever system, the Borg, basically, whenever it's talking to you, it's talking to you by flashing text real big on the screen, and everything behind the text like dims, and it feels like you're getting concussed in the head. Um, so it's it's intense. And um, it'll just be like, like like that level in particular. It's like I think it says like dodge dog. Like at this point, you've pissed the game off. Right, so now it's locked you in, and um, and one dude will start shooting at you, and you have to use the time mechanics to evade all the bullets, and you can't retaliate. And then a second one will start, and then they'll both stop after you dodge, and then it'll be like, "Die, dog!" And then they start shooting again one at a time until they are all firing at you. And the objective at this point, spoilers, is to get hit because you have no way to fight back. It's part of the story. 
but you can sit there and try <laughs> for hours and hours. <laughs> and and I did that, <laughs> and it's really hard. But just like, oh shit, there's a bullet right there, and one right there, and I can move that way. And but if I move that way too soon, the other guy will fire on that trajectory, and then like I that will be I'll just die. It's like, okay, fuck. Um, yeah, you know, so good you, is what it sounds like. Uh, yeah, I mean, um, you know, the, you can just sit there and if you're looking to progress, just get hit the first time and, and you're good. Um, but it's just an example of kind of what it, how the game story played out and how you interact with this silent narrator that just flashes text in your screen. Um, yeah, you know, other moments like go ahead, try to leave, and you you quitting the game is escape, and it just it just flashes at you. It's like try again. It's just like fuck. At one point, it tells you to it like forces you to close the game. It's like get out, don't don't ever come back. Mm -hmm. Promise me you won't boot up super hot again, mm -hmm. <laughs> right? Yeah. And you have to say yes, and and, then you show up anyway. and it won't let you start another level till you close the game. And then when you come back in, it's a different loading sequence, That's and it's just cool. like like this really ominous thing. And then like this red text comes on, like you didn't keep your word. That's so cool. <laughs> like like sh shit like that and then at the end of it you know being an indie game it, it, it asks you not spoiling anything about the story it asks you to share it right uh and it and and it gives you like, like a copyable like link and all that with specific text and i did in fact share it and it's just like you know it, it's a specific blurb and i'm super late to the game but when other people saw it on like facebook and whatever they were like you're right in response to the text that game is amazing <laughs> that game seems to me to be uh, an amalgamation of a lot of really good little ideas um, and one big really good idea. Um, I started to see a lot of indie games do things where you the the state of the actual game itself is manipulated by gameplay. So you know you'll be interacting with a terminal like a mainframe computer terminal in the game and it'll go ah, ah, system error crash. And then the game closes itself hmm. and then you try to open it and it's like error try again. And then you have to try again and then the game launches and there'll be like a new little folder with a message on the mainframe in the game, which is a pretty neat mechanic. Um, at first I was like, leave me alone. Just let me play the game. And then I was like, all right, <laughs> maybe I should stop being such a little fuckhead. Um, it's been pretty neat. And then what else? The the artistic style of this game, I don't know if it harkens back to the good old days of uh, the Nintendo 64, but okay. the whole system, uh, super hot mm. because it has, everybody is like a poorly defined polygon. Yeah. And there are no personalities. It's, it's super, it's like fighting the, um, in Super Smash Brothers when you had to fight the endless polygonal representations of the game characters in one player mode. For those of you who played Smash Bros. 64, I can't, it's like fighting polygon team. Um, it's sort of like that, but they were like this deep, deep red, which immediately is engaging. Um, if you think, when did they do that in? Um, Mirror's Edge. Yeah. No, not with the people, but with like surfaces. Yeah. And didn't, wasn't that in like Schindler's List or something? Somebody with a red, a girl with a red, was that uh, Sophie's Choice? I yeah, think. that was Schindler's List. Um, yeah. The black, black and white with the girl, with the little girl. In the yeah. Room. Yeah. Um, that's pretty neat. But then it is especially well contrasted against this almost minimalistic color scheme in the back because every it's like white walls, white floor, black lines for definition of edges and stuff. And then I think like black breakable glassware around the room, which is a nice surprise because even the glassware breaks, but it, it's, it's this, another thing that this game incorporates really well is this like minimalistic style that I've seen. And uh, it makes me think of like portal or even, you know, Apple products, just this thing that I've sort of grown accustomed to over the years and they put it right in a game, but they made it a little different, right? It's not totally that way. It's minimalistic, but with sort of well-defined, glassware that you can break and the characters are polygonal but they move really well their edges are well defined they're sharply colored they're stylistically explosive and it, it it's the color like the contrast there's so much contrast there's there's so much outlining there's uh i'm sort of losing my words because jake pulled it up and it, it just looks so good um <laughs> i'll give an example so the the people are polygons which means they have sharp edges they're made out of you know shapes but if you look at the tires on these plain white cars 
uh, they're perfectly round, which is in contrast to the sharp edges of uh, the characters themselves. So they pick and chose um, these characteristics so that they weren't 100% uniform, and I think they did a really, really nice job. The thing that I found most shocking about this game is my inability to predict the trajectory of these bullets. Someone will shoot at a character, and I'm like, oh, no problem. I'll surely dodge it. But it's the same thing that, like, if something from a distance is coming towards you, it looks like it's coming very slowly, and the closer it gets, the faster it looks. I would make mistakes all the time. Now, here's my question. Does time progress when you rotate or is it only uh, or is it only when you move like along the floor? Along the floor. Okay, that's pretty. So you can look around. You can look around as much as you want. Yeah. Another really nice touch I thought with this game was is that time doesn't completely stop if you don't move. So it's not like you can just pause and take forever. It just moves very, very slowly. Um, they took some really cool stuff from, I think, Mirror's Edge here. Well, maybe any game, but it, it rings through to me as Mirror's Edge. If you recall, Mirror's Edge was one of the first really popular parkour style games. You'd have to run across walls, grab bars and swing up. Very, very neat. It introduced a new control scheme where the left side of your controller controlled her left arm and legs and stuff, and the right side controlled the right side. But the con... the the combat you were really shitty at it you could do it but you weren't meant to fight in that game you were meant to run and this combat looks just like that so it's doable mm -hmm. but like it, it, you're it, meant to avoid things you, more than yeah it, it, exactly it um but what they did differently was that like they did this really cool status update when you're out of ammo it flashes really quickly out of ammo and when you throw the gun you can throw a gun at somebody it accelerates it really quick so it's the coolest aspects of slow motion in games and movies that they did really artistically to find it engaging this is just a lot of really good things done very well and then this awesome timing scheme that i had never seen before this game where time advances very slowly except when you move and if you fuck yeah. up if you fuck up and you move the wrong way and you have to move back you literally lose time that's it because you wasted that movement and then you have to cross back in front of your obstacle or the bullet or whatever and you're more likely to get killed. So it is, you guys are looking at it right now. I know this is probably your first exposure, but what are you thinking? What are you thinking looking at this screen? Hmm. I had watched a little bit before you guys got here. Jake showed us a level or two. I think it looks very clean, very neat at the same time i mean it seems like one of those older games like you were talking about like an n64 game or just something that's a lot more low tech but it has used really nice little elements like the time element and throwing your gun and just moving artistically around that makes it seem less low tech and a lot more well thought out and well placed and i also really liked i think at the end when you beat the level it'll start running through it in real time really i think yeah. it was right jake yeah Right. So when you beat the level, it was replaying the level, but it would just show it all in real time. So, so you're like seeing this. you move around like that without any of the pauses and time slows. And it just looks so badass. Oh, and play it's that. flashing yeah. super hot yeah. over the screen over and over again. Yeah, so that's there really is, cool. Super that is hot. the only voice acting in the game. We have it muted for the mics, mm -hmm. but this is where it starts going. Super hot. Super. Is and it, it like doesn't stop. That's so funny. Until you either Very advance cool. until you either advance the next screen or another neat feature here, uh, click uh, left click to proceed, press F five to edit. I can then crop the playback. What? And press F five again to automatically upload it to their website. Oh. No way. Nice. Yeah. <coughs> uh, but the actual URL I can't remember, but right now it's capturing and if I change my mind, escape. So this leads me to a question. Um, you and I both played Mirror's Edge, and if anybody listening hasn't played it, I think you can get it for like $4 now. Very, very good game. I played it on the PlayStation 3. I think it was one of their debut games. Loved it. Um, Jake, you played it, but my experience was the first time I played through Mirror's Edge, it took me like nine hours. The second time I did it in just over an hour. Is that how this game is for you? Like you got to figure it out and it takes some time, but once you get it, you got it? Yeah. 100%. You can still fuck up. Um, because unlike Mirror's Edge, it's not just evade and progress. It is you need to kill everyone. 
Yeah. Or fulfill whatever the objective is in that room. But is it, is it, I mean, is it, is there a random element to their generation or can you figure out the routine? Uh, the levels I'm more familiar with, it seems to be pretty static. Um, but in, in terms of who shows up and when and from where, mm -hmm. but, um, some of the levels, like there's one that's called stairs and it's just like a, you know, a spiral, like four, four sided, um, ascending. So it's, it's like three floors within some presumed skyscraper of some type. Right. And on every floor, there's multiple, you know, doors where they can spawn from or like little offshoot rooms where they can spawn in. And that is the, that, that level in particular is such a slug fest that knowing the pattern where they come from, I'm sure you, I'm sure you could learn it. I'm sure you could work out a, a like super competitive, like speed run run of that room. I'm certain of it, but the work involved with doing that is way more so than some of the other levels. Mm -hmm. So that there is, you know, it's, it's, I've really been getting into some of these indie games that set out to do a defined few things very well and then make you figure out the rest and give you, give you all the tools for a good time. Right. And then it's just, you, you just have to get good. The fury is the same way in that respect. Right. It's another indie game that I fucking love for the same reason. You have your whole move set out the gate. There's no levels or currencies or bullshit. Or, uh, no, like, like character levels. It's just, you, you have everything you need. Here's a boss, figure it out. And this is the, this is the, uh, exactly the same in, in that, in spirit in that way. There's something to be said for the uh, recognition of these indie devs that you don't need a ton of stuff in your game to make a good game. And we've touched on this a while ago. Earlier games were limited in their capacity to have a bunch of bullshit <laughs> by the technology, right. right? So the people making the games in order to make a good game had to do something really well because they just couldn't make a lot of things perform really well now we have such powerful machines that you can do a lot of shit but if you don't do them well they suck right. so it it and we found that it's really better to do few things well and maybe one thing really well than a bunch of things kind of shitty and it's better to have one good thing and one okay thing and one shitty thing than one good thing one okay thing and five shitty things and these devs, these indie devs, and we talked about like the low res um, pixel art style freeing up developers, uh, indie developers to make uh, games in the sense that low definition uh, graphics are in style and accepted. So now you don't have to worry about how the game looks in order to be popular. People are going to pay attention to the mechanics. And I think it's the same way. They don't have the development team to push a bunch of fluff. And a lot of these independent developers have found that if you just do one thing really well and everything else okay, and you don't make your game $60, you can say, listen, I did this thing really good. You're gonna, you might like it. You figure the rest out, chump. And it's a really engaging game. This reminds me so much of um, like Hotline Miami. That game is a cool top-down, one-hit kill, battle, you die super quick game. It has a lot of things about it that are kind of frustrating. The behavior of the AI, your movement. Sometimes I get stuck on walls. But they're an indie dev, and guess what they did? They did the art, well, art, art style well, and they did the, their combat style excellently. And I have to get over the rest of it. And, and, and that's the first time I experienced one thing in this game that I forgot to mention that's really dope is optimizing the game to restart a level almost instantaneously. Mm. And before, before that was a thing, dying and dying and dying and dying was unbelievably frustrating. It's one thing to try really hard and be defeated like a punk bitch because you didn't get good. There's another thing where you have to sit at this fucking loading screen. And you're like, are you kidding me? You know, if the game does something that you think is cheap and then you have to wait three minutes to load because you died 30 seconds in, it makes your head explode. But here, even if the game fucks up and you're like, I almost beat it and the game did something I think is cheap, whether or not it was cheap, you think it's cheap. Well, you, you can restart right away again. Whatever. It's in the past. You're immediately building a new experience. And what a great decision for this thing to do that, too. 
and the execution has gotten unbelievable. They give the content that's loaded in here is probably pretty basic. You know, they generate these enemies as the game goes. So up front, there's not a whole lot to be calculated. Like right now you're spawning into an elevator and you fight three enemies. So maybe it's continuing to load all the space and enemies beyond the wall as you're doing the combat. So it spaces out the calculations better, but like you die, boom, reloaded, boom, reloaded, boom, reloaded. It is so good. It is very efficient. It, I mean, I remember when I was first watching some of these most recent generation, I think you saw it on the 360, but you definitely see it on like the X bone and the PS4. There are games that have no loading screens anymore. Mm -hmm. You like as you're playing through the game, what they'll do is if they need to load in a new area um, because of memory management or whatever, they'll have you go through a tight space like a, a crack in a wall or a, a heating duct that you have to crawl through. And instead of just sitting on a loading screen, it loads while you're going through that. Mm -hmm. But the player's still engaged in something. So like if you're aware that they're doing it, oh, this is probably where they're loading shit in. But it doesn't interrupt the flow. That's the kind of shit that is super exciting to me, right? You're, you're not just getting better hardware, which, you know, always makes me excited, but the innovation of these people. And I love so much, so much that these independent developers now have a vector to get in the market because some of these ideas, some of these guys are only ever going to have one good idea and they make a game and nothing else about it is very good except their one good idea. And the whole community goes, yup. Yep, we're using that now, dog. Here's your three dollars, and I'm gonna make a game just like it. I mean, this is amalgamation. So many good ideas. So, what do you guys, um, uh, Lisa and, and Genevieve, what do, what are you guys thinking now that we've watched this and talked about it some more? What are you feeling? Like, does this remind you of anything? Do you think you're gonna get it? Do you? It looks you a lot like Portal. Yeah, like yeah it does. Saying. Yeah. Have you guys um, played Portal? Yep. Yeah. I haven't. I haven't played Portal, but I've seen it before. I think. How much was it? Uh, I think full price is like twenty or twenty five. It's a uh, half off right now for like twelve dollars mm -hmm. and something cents. And I think I, I, paid I like... just bought it and am currently downloading it to my computer right now. <laughs> nice. Uh, I, I forget what I picked up on Steam sale over the summer after we talked about it on Steam sale segment. Um, I forget exactly what I paid for it. Um, I don't think it could have been more than ten bucks. Yeah. And, and at that price, even at twelve, honestly, like if 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 anything we're describing in any videos you look up. Um, is appeals to you it is a very fun just kind of pick up and go i have five minutes let's play a little super hot yeah. or i have six hours let's play a little super hot <laughs> like yeah sure. i love that no, yeah. i'd say that's exactly the kind of game i've been looking for lately so this is perfect yeah it's, yeah, it's nice it doesn't have any of the annoying i don't have time for a game to get super immersed in but it has so much replayability, it looks like, even between, oh, I beat this level, but I want to try to do it again. Or I want to try to do it a different way. Or let's see how many ways I can do it because I can sit around and calculate every single thing I'm about to do while I'm doing it. And then at the end, I can see the super awesome video of me being a badass. There's probably an infinite number of ways of solving all these puzzles. Yeah. No, it looks really fun. And I think adding the little bit of story behind it, even if it's not a whole lot, just gives you a little bit more immersion, especially knowing that you're playing someone playing a game. So it's not like this game you're playing and they kind of are the storyline. It is the story because you're playing the game that they're playing. It seems like I feel like I would play it. I don't know if I would buy it right now just because I'm super busy with school and I don't have time to buy yeah, anything. You don't get new. sucked into it. But yeah. But I would definitely enjoy playing the game. It looks like something that's fun and not too difficult. And like you were saying, Jake, where once you understand how to play it and you're used to the time differences between moving and not moving, it seems like a game that gets a lot easier, but also a lot more fun because you're good at it and you're not constantly getting bullets in the back or not knowing how to dodge. I or... still constantly get bullets in the back. <laughs> well, okay. You're uh, not that great, but but, that's fine. but but I'm certainly much better than when I started. <laughs> here's my Here's a yeah. question I have. Can you cut rate to... Um, a combat sequence like after you go through it can you go right to the combat hallway or do you have to go through all the narration and stuff again it depends on the exact level okay um because that can be the really frustrating part uh in like hotline miami and part of the reason that i've sort of um i've taken a break from it i got stuck on one level and there's you know some task that i have to complete in order to get to the event that keeps kicking my ass yeah. and it was a, a big problem i ran into with beat cop like on the last day i wanted to go through and get the other endings 
but I have to play 20 minutes of gameplay just to get to the end because, oh, go do this. Read all this fucking dialogue, blah, blah, blah. The blah. worst is cut scenes right before bosses that you yeah. have to Ugh. keep. You can't skip. The first Kingdom Hearts was really bad about that. Yeah. And I'm glad that in the second one, and I'm assuming the third one, since I haven't had time to play it yet, they added in and be able to skip scene feature which is great especially if you're trying to just replay one fight thing and you have to watch five minute video about you talking to people i'm like yeah. i already saw this 20 times yeah it's annoying the, yeah. The, 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 the simple placement of a quick save right before uh like they're just having a buffer between the cutscene and the start of the fight where like here's a stretch of hallway and you might not be able to always do that but many games do do this mm -hmm. where okay cutscene small stretch of hallway where you can see the boss arena ahead but if as soon as you cross the threshold into the arena, the boss fight starts, oh, we put an auto save there. Simple. Yeah. It's just easy. There, I mean, there, there's definitely a sweet spot. You don't want it to be too long, but th there's definitely a challenge of having a couple of jobbers or like weak enemies that you have to work through before you engage a boss. Jobbers? That yeah, yeah. It sort of gets you excited, right? Because you're like, all right, there's like four mid-level um, enemies before I engage the boss. But if I get sloppy and careless, they injure me too much that I have to restart again. I sort of like that. That um, See, that for me is kind of annoying. It's fine the first few times, but if you really have to get through it five, maybe ten times, depending on how hard it is, then as soon as you make a mistake in those earlier easy characters, you know you have to restart. You're like, God damn it. Or, yeah. oh, I missed that ammo. Or the one thing that I needed to spawn here is now spawning something else randomly. You're just like, okay, this is yeah, well, in so a, in, irritating. In a game like this where you can respawn instantly, I find it a lot less frustrating. That is much less Because I just, I turn to my, I get frustrated. And I look at myself and go, get good. You got sloppy, you little dumb dumb. Do you well, choose to respawn or? Yeah. Okay. Mm -hmm. You can either, it's just, it's, it's, well, the, the I'm, I'm at the end of the level. But when you die, it, it starts flashing the control on the bottom, right? It doesn't say super hot because you lost at that right. point. But it'll say like R, R, R to respawn. And you hit respawn and it is like less than one second and the level resets. It's just It should say bam. something like loser cold. <laughs> um, well, as, uh, shoot, what the heck was I going to say? What were we just talking about? Loser cold? Uh, jobbers before the boss. Jobbers before the boss. Auto saving. Auto saving. Um, unskippable, unskippable cutscenes. Um, we, as we were talking, I, I am playing, I picked up a level called uh, Old Boy after the, after the movie, the action movie, uh, where you fight your way down a hallway. Um, and I, <laughs> as we were talking, I, I beat that level. Uh, and right after that level in the story is one of the cutscenes I alluded to earlier, where like you get kicked out of the game and ordered, you're forced to promise not to ever boot it up again. And of course I immediately did. Um, and, uh, you know, the, in that, area there there's a sequence where it, it puts your character in a prison cell and like it flashes words at you and makes you try to escape the game and it won't let you that whole thing um it has you kind of in order to advance the cutscene you actually have to left click repeatedly and it just it just like warps you forward a little bit like right? and and until like your virtual character is staring into the bedroom of your virtual character's player and then it says, we are watching you. And it does like that shit. And we, we were talking, you guys weren't watching. But the point being is that that cutscene, one, one thing was an active cutscene, right? You have to actually hit buttons on the keyboard for the chat sequence after that. You know, you have to follow the game's instructions to progress. Um, but it is a cutscene. You're not killing guys, right? Um, and then as soon as you get back to killing guys, the same rules apply. You hit, you, if you die, you hit auto respawn. If like, you don't have to do the cutscene again, you are now in the level where huh. you're fighting. Um, yeah. So the only way you would repeat the cutscene is if you play the mission before the cutscene. Hmm. That's it. Mm -hmm. And it's so brief and it is active that it's just really just the end of that particular level. That's nice. Hmm. Yeah. Um, so this this simply doesn't have that problem. That's, um, that's, see, that's another that nice creative way to get around either straight having to skip cutscenes or deciding for some reason, since this is multiple levels that I'm assuming you can just pick to play whichever one at random once you've beaten them. Mm -hmm. Either, I mean, there would have been the option to just get rid of it once you've beaten it if you weren't somehow deciding to restart the entire thing from scratch. So it's kind of nice that they just add it into the end of one. And unless you happen to play that, you don't have to, you know, do it again, which is nice because... Sometimes the cutscenes are great, but after you've seen them a few times, you're like, all right, I appreciate like, it. Right, I understand. Let's get this over Let me fight people. Exactly. Ooh. Shot in the face. Um, it is, it's a shitload of fun. I I'm so it. excited to play this tonight. <laughs> yeah, it's a lot so of fun. Excited. Um, boy. 
I, I, I I'm it's just so low drag on every level like like SMB. look low resistance okay um you just again you just, you just pick it up you can play a level it'll take you f- five minutes if you've played the game before even perhaps even if you haven't <laughs> like, <laughs> uh you know oh what's i but but you're vaguely familiar with shooters um and uh and it's also really really challenging and it, mm. it's that rare uh that rare, ba- rare balance see in my brain i'm thinking that like the i'm difference between like moving around and all that and it speeds up and slows down would make it easier for me because when i first not started much is happening at the beginning like yeah. before you move but at the same time like thinking about it like it you're constantly dodging stuff and trying to attack so mm-hmm. i'm like a little bit yeah like you you can't confused conflicted. you can't sit still for right. too long because you'll die and you can't move fast all the time right because you'll definitely die uh, it looks like it really makes what happens you think if you about just your like movements. Run through it. You will definitely die. Mm. Um, the 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 bullets will move. Obviously not at real life speed, but they'll move at their full speed in game because you are moving at full speed in game. And uh, they could then and they don't always like perfectly lead you. Like aim ahead of where you are now, so that they'll hit you where you'll be. But they can do it, um, and it, it it'll it'll fuck you, especially the shotgun guys. So is there, I think there's a second one, right? Or is there at least DLC? Uh, there might be, I honestly don't know. Um, I think there might be a super hot too. I, I definitely think there's DLC. When did it come out? I don't think there's two. It just came out in 2016. So we, we heard Chris got it. You literally bought it as we were talking. Oh yeah. Uh, Leesler, you're probably going to get it when you aren't in school anymore. And since you're going to be a pharmacist, yeah. that's in 15 years. Genevieve, what are your feelings on it? Well, like I just said, I... Parts of it make me think that it would be fun for me, but then other Here, thoughts here's, make it seem just like I'd be frustrated. Look, I, I'm I'm at a level of proficiency with it now, where I'm I'm moving f- faster, certainly faster than I did. Right. Right. When when uh, when you first start, I mean, it, it, the first few levels are very much a tutorial. Okay. Um, Good. It, it doesn't give you the full move set right up front. Not that there's a very expansive one. The one ability I almost never use and they show you later is that you can hot switch. Like you can jump out of your body into someone else's. What? What? Yeah. They lose their weapon. So you're bare, you're barehanded. Dope. And you can and you can't do it con- you can't do it over and over again. You have to like wait for it to recharge. Um, but you know, if you're really in a tight spot and you think of it, you can be like that guy. You can just warp over there and you're still alive. Right. Um, I don't like to do it because I'm a perfectionist and I have one life to live, damn it. <laughs> <laughs> Um, even though I've died thousands of times. Wait, so um, do you warp into a red character's body? Yeah, you look at another red blue. character okay. and you, okay. you assume their, their, uh, their vantage point. You lose their weapon, it, it drops and gets destroyed um, as a balancing mechanic. But, uh, as in but anyway, but all that shit aside, like you start off like you move extremely slow. Like you just little, if you're playing on a keyboard, you know, wads, you just, you know, one of your directional keys. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Oh, the bullets are still moving just very slowly when I'm not moving. Okay, shit. Uh, I need to go. Uh, I need to maneuver this way to try to punch that guy and grab his gun. Okay, let's go. Oh, there was a shotgun guy around the corner. I didn't see. Fuck. Reload. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> you know. Um, so 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 it's a lot of just like inching and then like mm-hmm. putting a plan together for who's around you and trying to see where they're coming from and and inching some more and oh fuck. That guy fired. Where's the bullet going? He's too far away to tell. He's going that way. I can't go that way anymore. Fuck. New plan. And just like you know, it's it's intense. Well, um, spoiler alert. But you don't have to go super fast. Super hot, not see, super fast. See, that's like my right. Go to is just yeah. You it would probably be a good learning ex- experience <laughs> for you because it would just uh, be me seeing people shooting from across the room, and I'd be like, no, run away. And then, no, because you have to be patient, which is not a skill. It's not. <laughs> it's not. Very it's much. not so, okay, spoiler alert. I already bought the game. I just okay. never played it. So somebody's going to have to play it. Then somebody's you. Oh, yay. <laughs> oh. Um, while we were talking about this, I thought of two quick things. One, there is a website that you can go to where, Porn like up? like in the game, <laughs> um, you whatever you type doesn't matter. It just puts stuff on screen as you type. But it's like a green screen with coding commands oh. so if you want to impress your grandma and show her that you're elite hacks or you can pull up that page and be like grandma i'm gonna hack the pentagon <laughs> and it'll just put no, all Billy. this code on the screen <laughs> and the um and the other thing is that that reminded me of is there is a website that lets you view reddit and it makes reddit look like an 
Outlook uh, email screen. So all the oh, posts yeah. are just emails you can click on and it reads in the email screen formatted like mm-hmm. an email. So go ahead and look for that if you want. Huh. All right. Uh, that was, th- this game sounds pretty dope. It was a good discussion. I can't wait until more of us play it. We can all get on this hype train. But for now, everybody stick with us because we're going to catch you on the flip side and kick it. Darth Maul is just the... No, the Night King is Darth Maul's icy brother. Change my mind. It's like Heat Miser and Cold Miser. Yeah. I'm Mr. Heat Blister. I'm Mr. Hot. Blister. Are you super hot? <laughs> yeah, that's oh. part of the song. Mr. Super Heat Hot. Super hot. Super. There we go. We brought it all back. Okay. Freeze. Uh, Chris and I are going to talk. We talked a little bit last week about this idea of Magic the Gathering Arena. Their new online Magic the Gathering card game, the granddaddy of them all, uh, installation. And I got on and I said, yeah, Chris, I'll download it and we'll play together. Um, so I Googled, I did some Google foo and I went to this, uh, this website. It said, download here. I said, this is a virus. So I did some Googling and I found out that their goofy ass URL is actually the right place. But in the process, I found out that there are other online Magic the Gathering games. Did Hmm. you know? There's one that's really good if you're just learning to play. There's one where you actually have to pay to buy more cards. And then I think there's a... it's, It's the collecting, the card collection game, except on the internet so the interwebs yeah so you don't even have to uh you don't even get actual cards you just pay to get access to it and unsurprisingly that doesn't seem to be supremely popular then there's another one and then they were talking about the actual magic the gathering that wizards of the coast came out with in the 80s and it's still a lot of fun to play so i found the link i downloaded it it took a little while but uh <clears throat> excuse me i think it says it's in beta it's version like point one six something i set up an account it was pretty easy it let me play before i even confirmed my email i did eventually confirm my email but um and I, i'll i'll tell you what you said about um the rewards the daily rewards being enough that you're not left wanting more uh i agree they give you three daily rewards and i guess i'm early enough in the game that they're still just giving me like a deck mm-hmm. every day today they gave me six decks they're like yep. all right enough just Here's some more for something like use 40 green spells or whatever. And then um, the other ones are, you know, you get coins, get boosters every day. You can, you get 15 win bonuses. Every time you win, you get um, some sort of bonus for first 15 times you win. And that takes me like four hours to do. I don't play four hours every day. So I get rewarded as long as I want to play. Um, I quite enjoy it. Are you yeah. still having fun? Oh yeah, oh yeah. I play it every day, mm-hmm. every day, because uh, much like Super Hot, like you, you, you can be in and out of a game in five to ten minutes, really. Do you get to keep all your decks and everything you win, like all the? Oh yeah, cards oh yeah. And stuff? Okay. Yeah, you can. Yeah, you build up like a library in there, and you get you get access to all the current um, uh, uh, boosters that are out right now. Everything that is like in the current standard, you have full access to all those cards. The uh, the thing about the decks is, uh, after I got like six unlocked, I tried to build my own. Uh, it was a white green deck, um, which means something if you know what magic the, it is. But uh, suffice it to say, green is like nature, big monsters, and white is like life force or whatever. Uh, the idea being that I wanted to have a bunch of guys on the field and a bunch of health. So 
Um, it took a little fine tuning. Uh, I actually had like a, you can only have 60 cards in a deck. I got up to 125. I was like, I need to get rid of half of uh, these. Yeah. <laughs> um, and I did cause it, it started off as like a red, white or a green, white, and then it turned green, white, red, green, white, red, black. And I was like, all right, I got to trim the fan here. Um, and it was okay. It was kind of competitive, but as I played on, I ran into these people who just had these super boss decks. Mm-hmm. I'm like, God damn it. The nice thing is though, that when you get these rewards, these booster packs and stuff, they give you wild cards that you can redeem. Like, so there's common, uncommon, rare, and like mythical Mythic rare. rare. So if somebody has a really nice card that I don't have and I want that, and ha- instead of having to go out and spend money, I can get that card too with my wild card, which you earn. It takes time, but like, I don't feel trapped like in real life. Yep. I'm like, I got to go spend $50 to buy this fucking So it'll just card. let you mirror the card with the wild card. So yeah. you can like yeah. have a wild card and be like, I just want it to become this now. Well, you, every you, X you amount of de- every X amount of decks, uh, n- uh, packs that you get adds to your un- like number of uncommon and rare, like, uh, wild cards that will, you'll get out of a deck. So like, I think it's like, like, f- like five for an uncommon and then like 10 for a rare. So every five packs, you'll get an uncommon wild card every 10 packs or, or whatever you'll get, uh, a rare and wild, wild card. card. You can always, and then you can you pick wanted. that from like, you know, whatever, you know, That's scheme. Nice. Yeah. It's pretty cool. Yeah. So, um, and then when you when you unlock a new deck, it's not necessarily new cards that you've um, that you don't have. I mean, some of them are, but a lot of them are, are cards that you already have. However, they are organized by the people who made the game. So it's like the idea that they had in their head of how these cards should be played when they made the fucking game. They're like, here you go. And I end up learning by osmosis, right? I'm like. How are you supposed to play? Oh, you couple it with these cards. So there's like, right now I have like 12 different kinds of decks, 12 different styles. I didn't even realize there were this many. Mm-hmm. And they're awesome. So when I tried to put together my custom deck uh, or my own deck, I thought I would do one thing. I played that. Eventually I unlocked a new deck that they gave me. And I realized like eight of my cards had to go mm-hmm. because I looked at the professionally made deck. I'm like, shit, I got to be more like this. And, um, it's a good template. Yeah, it's they're, a, they're very good templates. It, it's such a it's such a natural way to learn. Now, just like any other game, I'm sure I'm going to have to do some serious research if I want to be very competitive at this, which is a little discouraging. But I'm getting sucked into yeah, and, it. More and and, more. Ma- and Wizards of the Coast is really good at hiding it, which is something I wanted to kind of talk about today. Because if you remember when you were on the main homepage of the game, there's a little switch up at the top. Yeah, for the play styles. Uh, let me go back to uh, this. Right, well, so gonna, you can. T- oh, oh, go ahead. Sorry. What I was going to say while you were uh, while you're looking for that, um, I'm sure I'll have to do more research, but I am learning a tremendous amount about this game that I've known about for 20 years just through playing decks that they built. It's it's it's. I'm learning more in two weeks than I've learned in 20 years. Yeah, yeah. But just because, it's great. Yeah, I, I'm loving it. I'm learning every time I play it. I learn something new. But uh, you were talking about this switch. It's like so normal y- mode. Yeah. So there's so there's this little switch up in the top corner that says arena play modes and all play modes and you switch it on and off, which is really, really dumb because when you we, we don't know why they're hiding these features that are supposed to be popular like, oh, I don't know, traditional standard. Uh, which is pretty much you can do a custom deck, but then what the traditional means is that it's a best out of three. It's another way of them saying BO3, but they're fucking hiding it. And everyone's like, why did you hide this from us when they flipped the switch? It was like, there was like, I read a whole big discussion on Reddit about it, how, pe- how pissed people were because they wanted BO3. Huh. Well, why would you be mad if it's there? It's just behind Well, the Well, yeah, but it was the, mat- the matter of fact because like new players didn't know that it was there. Yeah, I just found it yesterday and I've been playing for like a week yeah. and a half. And I was yeah, that, this was the first I found out about it. I was like, oh, great. And then I was just like, oh, sweet. And then like I started hitting all my daily bonuses even faster. <laughs> Wait, they affect your daily bonuses? Well, yeah. When you go into those play modes where you're not doing like me and you, like when you do like a ram- ram- random person, that counts towards your daily bonuses. Oh. Yeah. And then you could do ranked and shit in, in there. You up know, in there. I definitely, I have enjoyed it so far um, in, in a lot of ways. The one frustrating thing that this game is really making me get in, get used to is sometimes you just don't get the fucking cards, right? Like I've played yeah. my buddy Bridger and we'll, we'll do like best of one and he'll crush me and I'll just change my deck and he'll crush me again. And it just, ugh. but 
you know, I'll play 50 games a day now and you just get used to it. Mm-hmm. Like, I think even the most excellent players don't win 100% of the no. time or 90% of the time. But that best of three is really enticing because sometimes you'll have a bad game. And if you could play the get guy again with the same deck, you get to see if it would or actually see if do it well. would worked, right. Yeah. But I don't, I don't think you can do that for like... Like me and you. Like, I think that can only be in, like, the matchmaking. Well, we don't need to do it because we just get, I guess right, it doesn't matter, we right? just get right back in with the same deck, right? right? So, um, I had a lot of fun playing against you, though. The, 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 Chris and I ended up playing um, against each other, and we had, uh, we used the Discord that we used for the, the TGNA uh, Discord that without we used. Us? Yeah, without use. Uh, th- that we use for the Dungeons and Dragons playthrough. Um, that took a little bit of learning because the first time I went in, I was my username was Squintman, but I didn't relate it to anything, so I couldn't get back. I don't know how to get back in. So I, I made <laughs> on Discord. Yeah. Oh. Because it was just they're like make an account. I said no, and then I was Squintman, and I could never get back into that dope name. <laughs> What's a squint? I don't know, but I, I like no the same. Um, sounds. So we ended awful. up talking to each other through that which was cool. And then trying to fucking match up with each other through magic, the gathering you directly challenge was kind of frustrating. Yeah. Yeah. They're not very clear on how that works. Um, but once you figure it out, it's, it's pretty, it's still silly, but you basically both have to challenge each other. What's frustrating. It's it's not like an invite situation. Why? Why? I don't know. It's annoying. Yeah. We both have to type each other's names correctly. And they're like, they're like you don't have friends chris's name really is like friends? all this goofy fucking shit that isn't spelled what the is way you'd expect it's just dr wet farts but it's like d-r-w-h-e-t-f-a-a-r-t-z and then there's a number then there's a number number fast discord no, it's also Magic, Magic the Magic Gathering. Magic is the same format where it's oh. like your username with the with the number. Yeah, and guess what? Somebody gave me uh, one wrong number in their Discord oh, no. and one wrong letter in their fucking uh, Magic name. Oh no! And it, uh, like the the thing that really chaps my ass is you can't just search for somebody. You yeah, knew. Like, like I couldn't just search Doctor Wet and then oh Doctor Wet Farts pops up and I can click on him. Yeah. And so like we he used to challenge me and then it just lingers there. I don't know if he got it or whatever. It doesn't give. Yeah, him a, it, it doesn't, doesn't give tell you alert. that. It gives you no information. Yeah, you're kind of just like, yeah, I hope this is working. And then you challenge me, and then it goes, I guess we're gonna play. Like we were talking, he's like, all right, I challenged you, and I challenged you, and yeah. we waited for four minutes, and then I was like, okay. You can play now. Is there not some sort of friend system? Well, once you put in their name once, the the name saves. Okay, so at least so that after part the first is nice. Time, but yeah, still. but the the first struggle was yeah, because even with my buddy who introduced me to this, we didn't even realize that we were trying to play. Because I guess I was the first person he was able to match make with. Like, or, do that with like in steam you just search people yeah. in the friends and then you can right click send friend request i mean even it even um overwatch has a friend system that's not great but better than this i think if the impression that i'm getting is magic is more concerned with like it being more esports rather than like a friends thing oh what i mean whatever they're putting in a lot of uh, uh, things something i was reading about was between arena and the paper cards for 2019 they got like 10 million set aside for like prize for like tournaments Dang. for the two well th- th- and that's sort like of they're speaks, going ham that sort of speaks to um something i was already saying about the game i learned more playing this game than i have in you know 20 years and i think part there's like two things that would push people away from magic one like the dork factor i guess but that's sort of going away as as nerd culture quote unquote kill me uh becomes mainstream more much more mainstream um bazumba and then the other thing is <laughs> Oh, the God. the learning curve <laughs> uh, is sort of scary. It's a lot to learn. There's a big system. Even, you know, I played a handful of times. You get to the point where, like, if somebody knows a little bit more than you, they take a dump all over you. Um, but now I'm organically learning and still seeing some level of success. And it makes it much less scary. Mm. So the game is 100% more approachable while still maintaining the, um, the complexity that makes the game what it is right so it's 
it's a lot less scary. And I think if you also put prizes into it, you're going to get a lot more people like, oh, shit, I can learn this. I'm not too dumb for this. This isn't too. So that makes total sense to me. Now, you and I were talking, or we started talking a little earlier. Do you think that this will boost the sales of the cards themselves? And I immediately said yes. But you had some other thoughts which made me question. What were your thoughts? So I, I was uh, looking into this um, on Reddit uh, uh, the other day. And there is a there there are people like hardcore magic players for years who are worried that arena is going to kill magic. Uh, they they're afraid because they think that this is gonna they're gonna just give up on the paper cards and then this is gonna, and then they're gonna put all their car their all their eggs into the arena. Uh, the reason for this is not a great like strategic choice there right i I don't think so because this got (laughs) this got me to buy to buy the cards like i wanted the real things but i guess the opposite is what's actually happening and the reason being is that i saw a picture recently of like the like world championship like game and it's just like shitty tables in a big open room and no one else is there and it's kind of quiet and they're just playing magic and it's real stale it's real dumb it's not exactly a good time. But has it always been that way? Has it just recently changed to I'm be not that too sure. way? It's, always, it's probably always How been. does that align with that when Arena came out? Yeah. Um, I mean, I I think uh, of the friends I still actively talk to, you know, because you meet people along along your, along the road um, when you're hitchhiking uh, naked uh, for sexual favors. Um, my, my every weekend uh, to get here. When um, your own house. <laughs> Listen, Friday nights are interesting, uh, but anyway, uh, like like there are always people who are afraid of of new things, mm. new developments, te- technological or whatever. Especially change. if it's endangering change, especially if it's endangering something they like, mm. and it's not completely without fault. Um, but I don't think. I mean, I mean, just by virtue of knowing that it is a card game in a physical form and seeing several different groups of my friends start to get together on again, off again to play Magic the Gathering and D&D and other stuff, uh, I, I, I don't necessarily share. I mean, I'm not in it, mm. right? I've never played a game of Magic. Cool. But I'm not surprised that there are some people saying that sort of thing. Um, but I would be curious to know, like, with, with the real, with, you know, world "quote unquote" tournaments, if if that uh, uh, if the staleness and quietness you just mm. described um, is normal or yeah. new or whatever. Well, I mean, I watched a couple of videos on YouTube of like actual, you know, you know, pro tour, I guess, people, uh, Magic players, and even that's kind of boring. Like, you you have to have like a really really solid knowledge of all of these cards for the, and then. In order for to and, be and for it to be right, and well, that and like just for what, even when you're watching it, it's just it's, it's there's nothing teaching. really else going on except for if you just sat there like, oh, this guy can do this. What's he gonna do? And blah, blah. Like it's just not it's just not entertaining. Where now with Arena, you have like just the right amount of animations on everything. It's it's faster paced. Um, like the game ki- like forces things to keep moving. That was a really nice thing. One of the really nice things about Arena when I when I, playing through it is it will highlight what I can do with um, with whatever card I have. Now it's not perfect, but like I'll play down. I'll lay down a card, and I don't know exactly all the t- interpretations. I don't know a lot of these new rules. They explain the rule. There's like this new thing, Flash. You can play a creature card anytime you could play an instant. Well. You can play an instant whenever, but I didn't know you couldn't play a creature whenever, but I guess you can't, but you can play it if it has flash. And then there are sorcery and enchantment cards, and I could thought you could play those anytime you can play an, encha- an instant, but that's not the case, right. which I'm learning through this. So I'm learning all this stuff. Um, and I'll, and they do have animations. like It looks a lot like Hearthstone. Like the cards will fly across and mm. hit the other player's character, and when you if you concede, you, the character explodes, not like in a bloody mess and like an energy thing. Um, For people who haven't seen Hearthstone, it's like the cards themselves, not the creatures. Like animated. yeah, yeah, it's not like a big Pokemon monster coming across. <laughs> um, but it is cool when you lay down like a more powerful card. They'll do a neat little animation. Like if I lay down a, a Gigantosaur, which is this big dinosaur, a little like representational power. Go, 
of it and then there's That's an animation across the screen yeah it's <laughs> it's pretty neat um i will say this there is a a stereotype i don't even know if it's a stereotype but there's like this general assertion that these magic the gathering tournaments and stuff like a lot of video game tournaments are going to have people who don't have very good social skills and are smelly there i there are organizations now both gaming and magic the gathering i believe but i know it's at least gaming where they say if you smell too bad we will kick you out <laughs> you need to shower at least every other day yeah. right yeah. so uh, it's it, the environment itself can make it tough to want to engage in the more competitive side as it stands right now and i will uh, the high level tactical play, I will say, is generally unappealing to, uh, in a similar way to grappling and groundwork in the UFC. Uh, this is one of my favorite go to examples. So, everybody loves watching cage fighting, UFC, mixed martial arts when they are in a slug fest because Punches, punching is kicks. exciting. Yeah, it's cool. It's exciting when somebody kicks somebody in the head or punches them in the gut and they go, ugh. But they fall to the ground and you hear the crowd like, get up, get up. And I'm sitting around with people who aren't very familiar with that kind of, aren't very familiar with, you know, Western style wrestling um, or uh, uh, jujitsu. And they're like, it looks like they're just kind of rubbing against each other. Or hugging aggressively. And I have realized that they will become much more engaged if somebody talks them through the technique that's actually happening. And this is what uh, Joe Rogan used to do, in my experience. He might do it again, I don't know. But in the beginning of UFC when he was announcing, he would talk about all the different technique that was going on. And I thought that was really cool. Now he sort of gets really hype and doesn't do that. But... I'll explain it to whoever I'm sitting around and be like, okay, it looks like he's in a bad position, but if you watch his leg, he's trying to sneak it around his hip to get a hook in. And once he does that, he can throw his weight forward and then get in for a choke. And you need to get your arm over here to, for a choke and he'll tuck his chin to try to defend it. So once you start to, and I found that explaining that to the people near me, not that I'm an expert in anything, but I've done it. Um, they go, oh, this is this is pretty fucking cool. Like this is exciting because now I know what they're trying to do, and I think it's the same thing with high level competition in things like Magic the Gathering. So there's a, a really famous video out there of some final fight on uh, I think it's Street Fighter. What's the game with Chun Li? Street Fighter. Yeah. So this this guy, um, it's a final um, final battle, and this guy. He's using the guy who has the kick, this multi-kick, like really fast, like boop, 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 kick. And in that game, if you simply block, you take what's called chip damage, which is a little bit of damage, not nearly as much as you take from just getting hit. But the guy playing Chun-Li would have died had he taken chip damage. The only way not to get that chip damage is to perfectly time his counters. Mm -hmm. So it's like 27 kicks or something 17 kicks from this character and he's got to get it perfectly frame by frame push the button to counter this move and not take any damage and he fucking does his who 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 he, who, who he blocks all the kicks and you hear what? the crowd erupt and then they're like they're going ah! and then he gets up and he like fucking kicks the other guy and chun li <laughs> chun li kicks the other guy in the head and he wins and the crowd goes wild and oh i watched God. that for the first time i was like all right that was kind of cool like what was the big deal and then i read the analysis and i watched it again and i read another analysis and i watched it again and now every time i watch that video i start getting gassed up before because <laughs> it's an exhibition of incredible technique knowledge and skill mm -hmm. and it's exciting it's the same old thing but it's because i know what's going on yeah and i think that that's it's not universally hyped. I think that applies to every kind of competition. Mm -hmm. I never liked baseball because I was bored. Right. It is a it can or can be a slow game. And then over the years watching it with like, you know, Frank and, and Matt and, and other people I've lived with mostly uh, and some family members. Um, I started to understand. It's like, oh, the bases are loaded. Oh, it's the bottom of the ninth. And if there's a homer here, the underdog will win, <laughs> right? Mm -hmm. Oh, <laughs> oh, that's that's why they're like glaring each other down and like and now I'm looking at their faces and their expressions and like how like all the little, oh, okay, I'm kind of dialing in here. Mm -hmm. And by no means, I'm, I'm still on the fucking expert on baseball, but I can watch it and I can enjoy it 
based on just a, even just like a ground level knowledge of what's supposed to be happening. Um, and I think, you know, same goes for a Dota tournament or, yeah. or magic or whatever. Well, it happens with football a lot too, in that like people who aren't big into um, American football, if I'm talking about European football, I'll say football. Most people. Think Very that. different. Um, but football and, and they're like, Oh, it's boring. So much stop start. And like, I don't, I don't get mad because I realize that I've been in that position where I look at something, I just don't get it. But it's like, it's like such a strategy game and I always kind of knew it, but what really showed me how much shit there is and how much of it isn't an accident was just a couple weeks ago, listening to Tony Romo. Now, if you, if you don't know who Tony Romo is, he is, he was the quarterback for the Dallas Cowboys, the most valuable uh, football team in America. I think it's like the fourth value, most valuable franchise in the world it's behind some football teams uh they have a billion dollar stadium and I, I don't know that he ever won a super bowl i don't think he did but he was a really excellent quarterback he knows a ton of stuff and he's since moved to the announcer's booth and what he does is he goes oh well this quarterback knows it's this time with this much left to go on the field if he sees these uh um if he sees the linebacker step up in this way he's going to throw to this receiver and the bing bang boom it happens but as soon as he like romo sees it he knows it within a half second he calls it out now these plays take three seconds to happen snap step back for two and a half seconds throw the ball it's like three seconds he is super quick it's amazing and i learned that there's even more nothing's an accident it, it, mm-hmm. it it's such a like a, a thinking game and then also huge guys smashing into each other. So right. who doesn't love that? I I still am not a uh, of of the major American sports football. Still kind of near the bottom. Yeah, for well, me, for me, I'm not a sports guy in the first place, right? And 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 having just having said what I just said about baseball and what you just said about football, um, I mean, I know you know way more about football than me. But the same level of basics to understand football, at least in my mind doesn't get you to the same place that it does with something like baseball or even or even things like hockey or basketball for that matter because football American football is sort of its own it's very different in, in a lot of important ways I feel like I'm in, I'm required to learn more about it to to appreciate it at that level um, I feel like it's a paradoxically a higher barrier to entry but a lot of people choose to meet that barrier <laughs> yeah i whereas i don't <laughs> I, so, back when yeah. i was like a little bit more of a cunt you know when i was young i'd be like this sucks and then i you know i'd be like oh now i realize that people who enjoy this thing i don't enjoy probably just understand what's going on and like when i talk about um football i don't say i think it's dumb or stupid or whatever i just go i just don't get it like They'll finish games nail nail, and people had a blast. I'm like, I just don't get it. I'm sure there's something about it that you guys love. Maybe someday I'll see it, but I don't. Genevieve, you had something thrown in there. No, I didn't. You raised your hand. <laughs> no, I was stretching. <laughs> oh, you were? Yeah. Okay, that was very confusing. Sorry. Um, but sports ball. And I think there we go. Uh, I think ah. I think we end up with the uh, same sort of thing with these esports and magic the gathering and such um and the nice thing about this is that more people are going to organically and easily get over that barrier to entry right so if there was a fun game (laughs) that allowed you to learn the rules to any other sport in the world that you could play and have fun without having to already enjoy the sport i mean you would get more people into it and that's sort of what i see arena as and I understand the purists and the hardcore players worrying that their favorite game will be diluted by less serious people entering into the sphere and having influence. And, you know, the market does what the market does. And if you have a hundred thousand casuals willing to spend a dollar each, as opposed to a hundred hardcores willing to spend a hundred dollars each, well, they're going to go the way the casuals want to go most of the time. But, this reminds me of this uh, fact, and uh, it, uh, it's like concealed carry um, permit holders. So, like people who can carry their guns concealed, which you need a permit for, I think, everywhere, are less likely to commit a, commit a crime on the whole than police are. Now, I would not assert that people who carry guns, like carrying a gun, makes you less likely to commit a crime. I would assert 
that the barriers to entry self-select for people who are less likely to commit these crimes. Or inclined to follow the law. Right, right. Because they've gone through all this extra stuff. No, 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 no. Because the only people who would go through all this extra stuff are the people who are less likely to commit crimes than police officers. So in my mind, as long as you don't change the barrier to entry for this high level, excellent play, you, you won't subsume the nature of the game that the traditional players love so much at these high levels, but you will get more people because you know, you might get a hundred thousand more people who get exposed to it with this magic, the gathering arena. And then you just have more people with the personality type exposed to this high level of play mm. who probably wouldn't have been otherwise because they wouldn't get over that initial hurdle of starting to play. So you get them hooked and then they go, you know what? I really want to explore this now. So even if there's more people in this high level competition, I think it will self select mm. for people who will add to it in a positive way for traditional players. That, that is my guess. I don't know if anybody has any counter thoughts. I think it's, um, I, I felt a little dicey about the analogy to conceal carry until you fully flushed it out. I'm glad I let you do it. Mm-hmm. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> Good job, Jake. And I was Proud like, no, no, that, yeah, that's, I, I think I see what you mean. Good. Mm-hmm. And, and I think it again applies to the non esports as well. Mm-hmm. Because if you don't get the opportunity to play basketball in gym class or what have you, you mm-hmm. might never be inclined to play it in uh in you know in a parking lot with some friends after school and then you may not ever realize oh i'm really good at this and Mm -hmm. go for a scholarship down the road and possibly become a pro right so yeah that's exactly it right so So what you're saying it's you just have to play it once in gym and then you get a scholarship that might be all it needs (laughs) in all in all seriousness that that, 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 in all seriousness that might be all some kids have ever needed to 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 realize that's what they want to you know strive for you know If, if you know if the whole world had um, phys ed coaches who were total dicks during basketball, people would be like, I don't want to fucking play basketball. Like, fuck this. This sucks. In my only exposure to the sport, it sucks. But if you made them all nice, you get more people, and you'd probably get more people who eventually end up being really good who wouldn't have been there in the first place because they wouldn't have gotten... So we're sort of rehashing the same thing. Oh, um, no, I agree. I was just thinking another analogy is fishing you just have a bigger net the fish were always there but you're catching more Mm -hmm. exactly so um (laughs) we were talking a little bit you said it so like bro fish fish so we were we've been working a little bit about whether or not we think it'll boost sales i find that part of the reason i didn't buy more cards is one i didn't understand what good cards to get two and i still sort of feel this way there's like six different versions of booster decks and booster decks are like booster packs are like 15 cards as opposed to full decks which are like 60 or 120 or something i don't know what the fuck is going on i don't know what's good to get for what theme i don't even know what style i really want well fortunately it just takes time to earn coins and these rewards and i can buy them and explore it so i'm learning through the game investing nothing but time which is fun this is fun time and i'm learning a lot about what i want so i think in theory what it might do is it might stop people from buying cards willy-nilly and wasting money but for people like me it can keep me engaged and i can build out a deck on the game that i really like on the on the wet internet game internet game what the fuck am i grandpa on a magic gathering <laughs> arena and then i can go all right i want this deck in real life i want to go play it and then i can go out and directedly try to get those cards you know, i was thinking i was thinking that same thing like when i first started it i was just like because you can like you saw how you can import and export like the deck list yeah. so i'm like well why don't they have like a thing where you can export this to like an app or something on the wizard of the coast website and then like They'll price out that deck for you and you can buy that deck. Well, like, why can't I have that? I think what they do is they want, they release cards because they want to maintain some level of rarity, right? So you mm-hmm. can't necessarily just order the deck that you want. However, there are individuals who will buy boosters and, and, uh, uh, those big decks and stuff, and they will assemble a pre-made deck. And they go, if you're trying to do this kind of thing, like if you're trying to have a control deck, which I think is a lot of monsters early, um, and then you you blow up the other guy before they can mm. they can do whatever 
they explain it in the game. I don't remember. So you can buy that, and they sell those those decks for like two hundred bucks for like a premium. But if you really want that deck, and you don't want to do all the research and take all the chance, you can just order that. So, and and it'll probably come out the same price or cheaper than buying boosters and hoping to build that deck. Right. And the thing is, and Nike's realized this, right? There is a huge secondary market for Nike shoes. It's like two hundred million dollars a year in the U.S. And Nike doesn't try to squash that at all because they know if there's a good secondary market, it'll make their their market initial sales more desirable. So. You might have somebody like, you know, let's say me, I go and I only buy pre-made decks, but that promotes somebody buying all those cards and building those decks. So the secondary market promotes the primary market. See, I, I love the whole deck building aspect of it. I love mm -hmm. like when I first bought that, uh, that booster, I'm, I just laid it all out and I was mm -hmm. like, I'm going to just, I just loved it. I loved putting it together and then I threw them around and then built another one and then yeah. I could just sit there and just make, destroy, make, destroy. I just found that incredibly fun. That, and that is the one thing where, that is one of the things where uh, the online game falls short. I was going through the deck and doing that in real life with actual cards in a mm -hmm. big pile is so satisfying and engaging, but I don't know if the UI is bad. Or if it's just me. Yeah, I, like, I can't tell. If, I can't tell either. I mean, because because there is two versions of like the whole deck layout on how you can do it, mm -hmm. but I I don't think I like either of them. And it still has each card has a little phrase, or most cards have a little phrase of like some lore on the bottom, and you can mouse over the card and it pops up and you can read it and like. Even in the game, when you play the cards, it just shows the little picture of the monster with its strength and health or whatever, which is good for game purposes, but it loses a little bit of that magic, mm -hmm. right? It's like this, it's like... It's just you, the gathering. You young bloods out there might not remember, but it was it part of the experience like when I bought my first CD, and especially people, the old heads are telling me when they when you would buy an an album, the art and the the book that they put inside of it was all part of the experience. Mm -hmm. And this is sort of sterilizing that experience. I'm not saying it's overall bad, it's just not as satisfying. So I could play this game and I could get all those cards, but I still want to hold them in my hand. Any digital version of something that was once tangible is gonna suffer from that yeah. to some extent. I mean, even I mean your the whole talk of the secondary market thing made me think of, you know, the secondary video game market mm -hmm. and how everything's a digital well most things are a digital download now and not that i was super gung-ho about going to gamestop and digging through the used bin um but if not for the advent uh, i am in favor of doing that with records i have a modest record collection oh, yeah. um and uh because so many of them are used and there's so many great records that aren't printed new anymore um many of them are dirt fucking cheap especially if you like jazz or classical music or like our old r&b and shit um and 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 the record has the, the 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 vinyl album has that sort of ritual tangible you know if you get a skip in a record yes it detracts from the music and you know if it's so bad that the record's now unlistenable that's a problem um but that also kind of lends to the sort of bonsai tree level carry and you sort of need to take take of them which mm -hmm. is not, it's not even that serious you just have to stack them vertically and not on top of each other and it's usually fine right. uh, and not leave like leave them exposed and leave them out and get dusty and whatever dump crud on them um, and with games uh, I wonder now a few things one would I be super inclined to go digging through bargain bins of video games more so than I am now if fewer old games I wasn't able to just fucking download um, I think I would uh, and two how has uh, I'd be curious to see figures on how what I'm guessing has been an evaporation in the secondhand video game market um, or a dwindling at least how that has that has affected the primary if there's any direct link between one and some of the things we've seen in like triple A gaming in particular you know it's pretty interesting I was thinking about this earlier when we were talking about super hot and the, the pricing scheme that that steam does and that they'll they'll have these five-year-old games that are on sale for $25 or $12 and I go that's an old game like if you were to get this as a store it'd be like four bucks mm -hmm. um, sometimes I'll go on sale for two dollars and then I miss it and they go back up to 12 and I might still buy it and at first I felt dumb but then I realized like I thought about it and I was like you know what if I stick to my one dollar an hour experience um, making it valuable. If I spend one dollar and I get one hour of playtime of enjoyment out of the game, then it makes it a lot easier for me to accept spending ten more dollars than I quote unquote needed to. Um, but it, 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 the the 
pricing thing, the way that they can adjust it sort of on the fly, I think has meant that these game producers are making more money off of me than they would if they just threw it out there and they priced it at one single price and they had physical copies. Right? I don't think that they could do that active adjustment. And I don't know, for me as a consumer, I don't know if that's good or bad, but I think in the end they are making more money this way. I, I try to articulate that. It might not be very clear, but... Um, I mean, I think if, if we, I think if anyone here had a hard answer on, on these uh, thoughts, um, you could articulate clearer. I get, no, I, I'm not saying you didn't. Mm. Uh, I, I, I understood you fine. Okay. Um, but there's, there are questions, right? Curiosities, mm -hmm. hypotheses. Um, and like, I mean, super hot. No, 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 not to go back to it. Uh, but I've definitely gotten 12 and a half hours out of it. Oh, yeah. And the story was definitely much less of it. Mm -hmm. Um, you know, so even playing through it twice. Um, so yeah, it's definitely worth it at that point. I honestly, now that I am as happy with it as I am, I would have paid full price for it. Mm. Um, I'm glad I didn't because obviously, um, magic though. I mean, you know, it, it, it's such a different beast because it's booster packs and mm. it's, it's, you know, mm. having to meet with physical people. Uh, it's not a video game. We are not talking about a video game version of a tabletop. And, um, there's always a lot of stuff that can, that can get lost in translation. I really appreciate a lot of the work that Matt, wizards of the coast do dungeons and dragons and all that lore and, um, magic gathering and all that lore. I think they do really fine work and it's not as ubiquitous as it used to be. I mean, when Pokemon was big, you'd find Pokemon cards, Digimon cards, mm -hmm. Yu-Gi-Oh cards, magic, the gathering cards fucking everywhere in every store. Now, once in a while I see them on a corner for like super discounted, and I, you know, you pick them up at a Rite Aid for half price or whatever, uh, or you go to uh, a specific store to get them. And I think that Wizards of the Coast did a great job waiting for the right time to strike. I mean, they're like ten years behind some other offerings yeah. of card games online. And we talked about different games that we've tabletop games we played that are like deck building, and they're sort of related. They're, people are getting used to cards in different ways. And anyway, I think. Wizards of the Coast waited a good amount of time to do it right. Mm -hmm. I mean, this is a beta version game that has a couple of weird behaviors, but everything it's very polished. It's though. really, it's really solid it's at its core. Um, and and I think it's what they needed to do to modernize. Mm -hmm. And they didn't dilute the integrity from my assessment. Now I'm a casual, but they didn't dilute the traditional integrity in order to move into a more modern space. So what about our non-players over there? Do you guys have any interest? Do you think maybe you'll pick this up and play uh, a little I, bit? Yeah, I've never played Magic before. Um, I had a couple of friends in college who played it and they would sometimes go to the local game store and you know, on the weekends and play some games with people. Mm -hmm. um, I don't know. I don't know if I would get into it because it seems like something that I potentially would enjoy because um, I like you know, you have to collect all the cards and you put all your things together and you're constantly being able to update things and it's not stale. And especially if you have daily bonuses and things like that, that kind of keep you interested on a very regular basis. But it just seems like such a time commitment. Mm. You know, it's not... To really be competitive. I know that you... you don't, Not even competitive, but even if you're not playing competitively, if you really don't put any time into it, you yeah. really suck. And it's I not, don't feel like it took a lot of time for me to not suck. Well, like, okay. I, caught, I mean, I don't know. I caught on quickly. Well, here's the here's one thing I forgot to mention. Glitch. Your um, your daily rewards are much more considerable at the very beginning, and then they wane as they go on. So your first reward might be like a deck, and then the second one's like 500 coins, and then your third one's a booster pack, and then your fourth one is 100 coins. Yeah, I, I don't just mean in terms of like, physical boosts and things that you get, but just mm -hmm. in terms of keeping up with the rules and keeping up with just playing in general or keeping up with tinkering with your deck, things like that. It just seems like, and correct me if I'm wrong, it seems like at least there is a time commitment that you have to put into it, especially if you want to play the game and you want to tinker with it. And get good. And get good. Well, there is that like, element that even like to... the best, good, the most good people are going to lose. You're not going to lose all the time if you have a shitty deck. You don't really know how to play. You won't win as much, but 
Um, their matchmaking system has seemed pretty good. It definitely seems like they, when I when I go in with a different deck, they pair me with somebody whose deck is effective against mine, but won't completely mm-hmm. break it. I, uh, from what I understand, and I haven't tried it yet, but if what the uh, the ranked uh, part of it, apparently that's very good. Like it's really good at putting people that you're leveled out with, and you're not going to get your ass handed to I, you. I played some ranked um, yesterday, mm-hmm. and it, I enjoyed it better than the casual stuff. Mm. Because yeah, I'll have to try it then. Because it, it, I had a deck. I got sort of bodied the first couple times. Then I won a couple times. I looked at how other people played. I tinkered with my deck, and then I saw more success. Mm. But I still lose, yeah. and I lose in like I get like really beat sometimes. I it's like one life to one life sometimes, and then I get beat. So I see how these other people are smart, and I steal their shit, tinker with my deck, and go back in. But the nice thing is, when you rank up, and then you lose. You don't lose your rank. Oh. It's very, very satisfying. And that would be so frustrating because yeah. part of the thing is like you lose, you lose, you lose. Then you win twice and you look like you're going to rank up and then you lose again and then you get demoted in other games. You're like, fuck me. Why do I even bother? I'm trash. This one. And I think at the end of whatever season it is, whatever your rank is, you get some prize. Mm-hmm. So um, that's kind of nice. Yeah. yeah. I mean, I don't know if I would pick it up. It's free. Just because yeah. in. No, I know. But. Just in my mind, I feel like I don't have the time for it, and I have so many other things that I continually put off because I'm constantly busy with other things. But it does seem like something that is interesting, mm. and I would potentially watch people play. Well, that so, l- leads to an interesting discussion because Chris and I are working on figuring out how to stream us playing. Yeah, oh and, boy. And I have, and we we played the other day uh, with each other. Um, yeah. Over, and we were talking over the Discord, Oops. and it it was. One of my favorite things was I brought that like meathead, like sort of jockey frat bro oh, okay. style to it, like just a shitload of trash talk to Chris. And Chris is like way more easy going. You hear him over there like, oh no. I'm like, yeah, oh, fuck no. you, buddy. You're terrible. And really, what's going on is like I made this like totally bush league move. <laughs> I blew up his like super weak monster. <laughs> I'm like, hey, why don't you get good, bro? But it's not, you know, it's because we have a rapport, it's not mean yeah, at all. Right. And it just, like, the back and forth and the difference in our dispositions was, oh, my God, it was so much fun. Because for me, because I've watched, I we all know I play Heroes of the Storm. Um, I've watched competitive tournaments of it. And knowing how it plays, as we've been talking about, it's a lot easier to watch something when you understand how it works. Do that in and of itself still being a game where there's action involved and there's moves to play and you're watching something happening and there's a besting of skills and such and there's fights. I could see some people maybe thinking that magic might not be interesting to watch because you're playing cards and it's just much more of an internal strategy game. And yes, you can have overlaying narration being like, these are the options you could do. What are they going to do? I I think that it might be interesting to watch. Still, knowing what I know about watching things like that and having a better knowledge and understanding how it might play, I just feel like it might be different. I'm excited to get Genevieve to play because I know she's going to be like, this is stupid, and then she's going to get some good cards and be competitive, and then when like Chris makes a really good move and kills all her monsters, she'd be like, this is fucking bullshit! <laughs> and and my, my one deck is real good for that. It's really, really good for just letting you like spread eagle mm-hmm. with your cards all over the table. There was yep. I played some motherfucker the and other day. Each one of his turns took like two minutes. And I was going to ask he, that's that annoying. Yeah, yeah, there is a, for for certain. There they do do it. You get like two times where like you can go past the timer. They well, that's if you you're that sitting either. and like on one task. This guy kept making move after move after move and progressing his turn, slow. but he had a car. Um, a car or he had a car that was like take another turn take another turn take oh, another uh, turn uh, so oh he went God. through his whole deck and he literally played he laid down a card it said you cannot lose the game until this card is destroyed and it was like there was some other card is like every time he took that. damage uh, he had to banish a card not just discard it banish it and so I had to deal enough damage that all his cards were disc- were exiled 
including that one. And once he exiled that card, I won the game. But he took like four moves that took five minutes each. I almost quit because I was like, this is fucking ridiculous. I'm pretty sure they're working on banning that card, by and, the way. And then I thought about it. I was like, <laughs> For this reason. I was like, you know what? Fuck that. I'm going to stick this out. Sunk cost fallacy. See, that's that annoying And too. I beat this nerd. I beat this nerd. Yeah. And nobody saw it. See, that I would did. bother me too is the time thing because you're waiting for the other person. It's like playing chess. Like, okay, you're making your move. Like, Hurry up, let's go. And, like, know, I'm ready for my next move. Just go ahead and make your move so like I can play. Does it you out of the game or do you just lose your turn? No, it just it just advances. It just moves, it advances like, it's like the, your part of And like, there was a turn. couple times I want to be like, let's go, dork. Make your, I'm like, or be like, this is really fucking boring. Or this is so much fun. Be real sarcastic. But guess what? You can't do that. You can't get like that. five things and none of them are is mean. Is there a with the oops? There is. is the I didn't oops. go with the oops. I didn't even bother. I was like, you know what? I'm not going to give this guy Apparently there is a thing now where people just span oops until the other person quits. <laughs> Psychological warfare. You can just mute the them. Off, though, you can just mute them. It's really yeah. easy. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. You just, so, um, I think that's. I think that's enough about that. I um, think that's yeah. what, if Chris and I go against each other, it's just going to be like a battle of the minds. Oh, it'll be great. Gonna oops, give up oops, on the oops first. Oops. All right, guys, stick with us. I think we <laughs> might get. Frank is looming in the corner. We might get him to jump on after the break. But once yeah. again, we're going to catch you on the flip side. <laughs> 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 And hear you. Hey, hey, Captain. Oh. oh. Who looks at his steam cell and says what they think. Two Ooh, guns, no ammunition. Who doesn't know anything but talks anyway? <laughs> we, us. Bill. <laughs> Billy, two guns. That's it. Billy, all right. two guns. All right, guns. abort, Billy, abort. Billy, two abort. guns. Ripcord. Billy, two no. guns. No. <laughs> fired. You're all right. Fired. So what my presence does, I don't even have to say anything. <laughs> yeah, Frank, <laughs> Frank's here. You're actively not saying anything. Hey, Frank, what hey, are you wearing today? The, the big. Oh, yes, tell oh. us about your pants. Oh my god, I'm wearing sweatpants again. God also damn it! Also gray sweatpants. <laughs> yes. Oh my god, we're like matching. <gasps> Three gray sweats. Moving on. Three gray sweats. <laughs> I hate you guys. <laughs> Today is also the big sports ball game, mm-hmm. uh, and there's been a petition. Pe- petition. Uh, a petition. Yep. So you have. Uh, <laughs> The Bubble Bowls halftime show yeah. from SpongeBob played during the I heard about oh that. sports oh my balls. God. I is hope it, it, if it doesn't happen, I'll stop watching the Is NFL. it one of the voice <laughs> actors or creator or someone associated with the show Squidward announcing someone? Is the announcing voice the actor Squidward's show. announcing. Yep. Oh, really? Yeah. Oh, my God. Yeah. I really want them to play Bubble Bowl. Like, <laughs> please, God. All right. So here we are looking at the uh, Steam sales today. We don't need to click into. Hack backslash g dot u dot hack g u last recode. Oh, that's a dot. I thought it was just a cool dot thing. Hack, it's an anime series. Um, oh, Seventy percent off. This game is really popular. I think the same people who made this made some other cool game that we were looking at. Anyway, seventy percent off. Good game. Twenty uh, percent off. What the fuck am I talking about? Twenty one hours left. Seventy percent off. Really good feedback. If you're into this style game, like check it out. Fifteen. I'm, I would spend fifteen dollars to figure out what the hell this is and if I like it. Really, what I would do though, I'd go in. Dot Hack is about a uh, MMO game mm-hmm. that uh, the protagonist gets stuck into, not yeah. unlike Super Hot. Um, mm. ex- and then like RPG type fantasy so stuff like happens sort within of the online. game. Sort of. Kinda, yeah. Okay. What I probably will do is go into that and find the first iteration of it and buy that for two dollars and then decide if I like the idea. I think they were all, they were all on sale a few Steam sales ago. Mm-hmm. Um, this like one comes up every franchise. so often. Yeah, super hot's on sale for fifty percent off for twelve forty nine. Jake already said that he Where got his money's worth. Mm-hmm. Um, I paid certainly no more than this amount twelve fifty. Uh, probably, I believe it was closer to ten or less. Is there some place that you can see all the historical prices for games? Uh, maybe I there's got to be a website there's somewhere. Be. Um, I can't imagine it was ever less than like five bucks, but you know whatever. Uh, Subnautica here it is for thirty percent off. 
I have Sub Slothica. Seen, I feel like we've talked about it. Before. I've seen a little bit of this game, but I've more read a whole bunch about it. Uh, it it seems sort of like an open world exploration game where you just kind of go through and do. I don't think it's a particularly directed uh, experience. However, there is like programmed events and behavior in the world that makes it sort of a, a thriller, like weird animals and light sequences appear and you're underwater. And it, I think it actually gets to be pretty exciting. Um, I guess there's a, a crafting element to it. Looks fun. Yeah. It's, I've heard the people who play this in, in, in the subreddit that I've read about who play this really like it. And they're like, this game is like sort of like two different games and they're both good. Hmm. Um, <gasps> that was a scary monster Ooh. in the video we're watching it. And stylistically it looks uh, like a kind of a less dreary steampunk Bioshock but it is really artistically impressive. Well, you, you're in the water. Like this is this That's, is a deep sea diving yeah. first person. Game. I was gonna say this is reminding me a lot of Abzu, uh, that game that I reviewed that one time, mm -hmm. uh, where it's like that scuba diving game. Uh, mm -hmm. A lot of that fantasy scuba diving. I mean, uh, it's reminding me a lot of that. This looks pretty darn. Cool. I kind of like it. At first, I, it sort of intimidated me, but the more I read about it, the more enticed I feel. Um, but I am a really shitty at horror games, and that's really what I thought it was at first. But it's sometimes scary, but mostly not. So I might have to pick it up. Um, but it looks really good. It looks really, really artistically really cool. Uh, and there's a good community out there. Yeah. How yeah. much I think is it? Looks it? Fun. It's what? Seventeen so? bucks. Seventeen fifty. It came out in last year. That's not bad for a one-year-old game. And I think there's a shitload of content. The Dirt franchise. Dirt. 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 Uh, I guess Dirt Man. is a racing game. Dirt Rally, that's all you need to know. 80% off for Dirt Rally, seven ninety nine. Uh, there's a Red Bull Volkswagen there flying around. Dirt Rally 2.0 for $60. Dirt 4? What? Oh, okay. I guess there's <laughs> Dirt and then Dirt Rally and then Dirt 2, 3, and 4. Dirt 4 is 80% off. There's I guess... also Dirt Rally 2.0. There's um not even out. Well, yet. that's probably what's gonna no. It, it, that's probably what's coming out. And they want you to pre-buy it, so they're offering their past iterations to get you hooked for cheaper. Um, as somebody who doesn't play a lot of racing games and would be dog shit at it, eight dollars and twelve dollars is too much for me to get into it. I'm gonna be right. frank with you. If it was two dollars, maybe you'd get me hooked. Um, but I know this is a really popular like franchise title so it, very positive reviews here simulation driving so i think it's i think it's pretty serious knowing li uh, knowing little about it other than what i've learned about rally racing from shows like top gear um it, it, it strikes me as a layman as as forza on dirt roads with mm -hmm. like hot hatches and and that sort of thing so yeah. like dirty and fast and yeah um which is probably really cool but there's no trucks or realistic mud <sighs> Let me down, dirt. Mud physics. Let me down. Thank right. you. Yeah. What else we got? Soul Calibur Six. Thirty-five ninety-nine. Isn't that a fighting game? It is. Oh, okay. But now they've got swords, and there's there's our God King. They've had they've had swords forever. From uh, Wolf and Stun. No, what's he? Well, the Witcher. The Witcher. Yeah. Witcher Three. Mm -hmm. He's featured. You witch you, and I witch me. Um, forty percent off, thirty-five ninety-nine. If you're in a Soul Calibur, that seems like a good price. But none of us do that. None of us do that. What yeah. is Vermitide? I was a big fan of Soul Calibur 4. Oh, yeah? Back in the day. Huge fan. How come you dropped off? How come you didn't keep playing? Uh, I didn't buy a Wii or a Wii U. Okay. Oh. Or, and I don't have a Switch or Bill's Switch. They're not... Um, I keep just I don't think next they, week I'll bring it back. It wasn't a Nintendo exclusive. It wasn't? No. Ah. I had Soul Calibur Four on GameCube. What and they for did? For some reason, I always assumed that it was. I forget a which because I'm not. A, I don't play fighting games either. But I remember when we were in high school. I, I think it was Soul Calibur Four, yeah. maybe three. Um, whichever one of those it was on each console, or each of the three major console platforms, they had an exclusive character yes. for. So you the know Nintendo, what? You're right, the Nintendo one had so Link. Yes, um, I think Sony, the PlayStation one, had Snake. Uh, no. They all had Snake? No. Snake S wasn't, wasn't in Soul Calibur, Snake, I remember. No step on. Um, I think the Sony one had Spawn, if I'm not mistaken. Hmm. And Was the, it Chief, Master Chief? The Xbox, Xbox one. No, no, no. The, 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 they're, they're two like, futuristic like gunplay characters for Soul Calibur. Um, I'm trying to think who, who the third one was. 
but they each had like a like fantasy swordy type uh, fighting. Uh, uh, many of the characters in uh, Soul Calibur use melee weapons. It's not strictly like a beat em up. Uh, it is a beat em up. It's just like f- flashy and with weapons and magic. I want to comment on. I love Japan's like usage of guns in video games and maybe sometimes anime, but mostly video games. Um, sp- specifically in the games Yakuza. So like the characters in cutscenes are really worried about guns. They're like, oh shit, he's got a gun. If he shoots me, I'll die. And then they get into actual combat with this person with the gun. It's just like, pew, pew, pew. and they're basically like mini punches. Like you get shot, you go, oh, 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 counter punch, <laughs> counter punch. Right? Like it's not a big deal. You get shot 20 times and you're fine. But in the cutscenes, you get shot once, you're fucking dead. <laughs> I love it. I just love it. Um, all right, so Rocket League, if you haven't picked it up by now, I don't think the 40% off for eleven ninety nine is quite the deal you're looking for. It will go down in the single digits. I think I've seen it for $2. I think I've seen it for $4. What is Vermintide? So Rocket League, if, you're not, if you haven't picked it up, don't pick it up for $12. Uh, Dirt Rally is up there. We already talked about that. Um, Football Manager 2019. I've, you know, I've actually heard that's a great game. It is. Uh, I read about it. It's supposed to be. Do, do you know anything about it, about why it's so good? Um, so it's it's like FIFA career mode, but uh, you don't have to know. Well, you don't have to play the actual game of soccer or football. Uh, oh, as so it's much. like a management simulator. Yeah, yeah. Mm-hmm. that's what I was wondering. Like, do you? So it really the, is just a bunch of charts. So why why it says <laughs> simulation, sports, management, soccer, and heist? What? what? Are you robbing a bank? <laughs> the, You're the robbing heist, FIFA. I, I have no answer. For These are user-defined heist. tags for this product, for the record. You just <laughs> rattle off. Um, you know what's... I One cool thing I've read is they started years ago, and I think they've probably gotten really good at it, is like negotiation with players in games. So you actually look at the value that they would bring to your franchise in the game and then you can negotiate with how many millions of dollars you're going to pay these guys. And I've watched people play games with that mechanic and I'm like, I didn't pick him up because he wanted $40 million and he's only worth 26. So here's, here's the thing. I think this game is, I mean, of course this game is far more popular in the UK and in all of Europe than, than the United States. We know that, but I mean, even among uh, football fans, Versus, like, if you take the, the the football fans in the United States versus football fans in the UK, uh, generally people who are football fans in the United States are people who played it rather seriously, like at a varsity level in high school or higher, right? Um, and played it for a long time. Versus, you know, you think of think of the average uh, football fan in America, like American football fan in America, uh, who probably has never played an organized down of football in their life. Because what if you, the Super Bowl tonight is going to attract 150 million viewers probably in the country, which is like a third of the country. They're not the third of the country has not played organized football, right? And same thing in in the UK. There's a lot of people who've never actually played football. So if they had to like, they sit around in their armchair GMs, they, they would not make a good coach because they don't actually know how to play. <laughs> they've yeah. never actually played it in an organized manner, but they think they're super smart at it because they've paid attention to it for a long time. So this is the part that they're interested in. Can mm-hmm. I get the right players together for the right price to make the best team to compete in the FA cup, in the EPL, in the champions league? Uh, and, and, that's what they they want to try and simulate they don't they don't care as much like the reason madden is so popular in the united states everybody thinks they know what play could be bill belichick um whereas nobody really cares if they're the gm of the team and this this well fortunately for you if you're looking for a simulation they say right here it's simulation gaming perfected so Mm -hmm. um, create your own unique footballing story by taking charge of the club you love Complete control. The stunningly realistic game is yours. Every decision in your hands or yours to delegate your call, your way, your story, everything you've ever dreamed of. Um, There's an exclamation point. I had to hit that. So this this looks pretty cool. This looks like it might be up my alley, um, especially if they add the mechanic where I can summarily execute anyone who flops. Um, That's fine. Then that is a your way. So yeah, Yeah. then I will. You know, that was the way then. Well, good. We're good then. Thirty-seven fifty. If I had forty dollars laying around, this would be pretty. This is the kind of thing that I think would get me more into football than I am right now. Um, 
and, and we were talking about appreciating the tactics of something in order to appreciate it overall more. I think this is how I would, this is the vector in which I would enter. So, all right. Warhammer Vermintide two. Um, the sequel to the critically acclaimed Vermintide is a visually stunning and groundbreaking melee action game, pushing the boundaries of first person co-op genre. Oh, join the fight now. Wait, this is a, what the what? This is a first person game. I thought this was going to be like Warhammer total war. Oh shit. You're a crazy monster and you can fight other monsters first person with axes and stuff. Frank, me and you are playing this. I can monster. feel it. This looks cool. This does look cool. What's the price? I can't I can't see it. 7 11 99. Mm. Well, we could get Vermintide if that's co-op for 30 cents, I'm sure. Oh shit, your typical uh Against the skyline, the outline of your typical uh, RPG characters. Um, there was like a barbarian and a dwarf. And, yo, this combat is fast. You got some cool, uh, it, it's really, really fast for medieval type first person battle. Think yeah, Star- Skyrim. Look at that. That's so cool. Wow. This looks like a lot of fun. It's a mix between like almost ah. tactical handling and uh, beat em ups. This this looks awesome. Co-op, core, first-person multiplayer action. All reviews mostly positive. Recent reviews, it's got twenty-one thousand one hundred eighteen mostly positive reviews and eight hundred or six hundred twenty-three mixed. Maybe they did some sort of update that the community yeah. didn't like. This is a, uh, a a Warhammer series thing, right? Yeah. 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 Warhammer That's- is is like a has become a a cool theme. Um, I think Warhammer, the tabletop game, which can be very expensive, it has actual miniatures, um, is where it all started. Am I right or am I, I wrong? I don't know. I never got into it. I don't. I don't understand it. I don't know anything about it. I will not therefore judge it, except for how bad it is. Um, <laughs> now, I'm sure. I'm sure there's a lot of good stuff for it. But like I said, I don't know anything about it, so uh, I I don't mm-hmm. see the appeal of it. Because outside of this game like this game looks pretty sweet right most of their most of their uh ip their intellectual property installments are really well done it's sort of like lego whatever they do they do it pretty well yeah I, this game looks sweet so um I, so 12 bucks fucking right dude i might want to uh for some reason i kind of want to do some some review hunting first yeah if i do if i i might aggregate the cost and get the first and the second for like 16 bucks or whatever it is right because then each one's neat all right that's everything we got up here let's uh let's make a call uh frank why don't you get us started yeah i would go with dirt um just because i i liked forza the analogy was pretty good. This one looked pretty good. Seven bucks, I think, was the first Eight, one, right? Yeah. Eight. Okay, great. That's awesome. Uh, Pat's 34, Rams 27. Pat's by seven. Okay. <laughs> Since we were also doing that, which I just decided. Yes, I, I guess so. Um, I'm probably going to go with the Super Hot for 1250. So see how mm. mad I can get at that. I. Not. Okay, so I wouldn't necessarily personally pick it up. I think Subnautica looks really cool. I don't know about seventeen forty nine for a price for it, but uh, I think that one looks very interesting. So that's gonna be my vote. Uh, super hot because I already bought it. Mm. <laughs> All right. If I did a non-zero amount of uh, reality altering drugs, I would pick up Subnautica because I feel like that would be a wild ride. Mm. If I was viewing the world through a different lens, I was gonna say. Um, whatever that Warhammer game was. But now that we see popped up on the screen, yeah, I was going to do Warhammer Vermintide, but in front of me is Divinity Original Sin Definitive Edition Divinity 2 with some sort of androgynous, uh, long-haired, elf-eared, armored person. Uh, that's right up my alley. I'm, I'm too turned on to say no, so that's that's it. I'm spending $30 on this elf thing. I want it. What? Wow. Yeah, I want that box. We didn't even... Cool. It wasn't in this list as we went through it, yeah, and we did not take yeah. a closer look at it, and you just but are just... It's sensed yeah, You're that it. aroused by that androgynous... Yeah, that's like 300% the real estate that my ear takes up, and mm-hmm. it's pointy. I mean, what else could you want? Mm-hmm. It's got 38,000 very positive reviews. The Divinity series is very popular, and from what I've heard, very good. All right. Uh, I, I have to say super hot because I'm already a huge fan, and mm-hmm. I think um, anyone who likes my description of it earlier ought to do it, apropos that it is currently on sale. Um, but in the absence of that, for something new, for me it's kind of a, a, a coin flip between Subnautica and Vermintide 2. Oh, I think that coin would have to fall on Subnautica. 
because it is very different. Yeah, you know what? It occurred to me, if I was going to play alone, I would do Subnautica. But if one other person, like Genevieve said, yeah, I'll play Vermintide with you, I'm going for it. Mm -hmm. uh, a fucking hype-ass co-op would be right up my alley right now. Mm -hmm. All right, anybody, any closing remarks? Leesler? No. All right, so, you got to get back to studying. We got to get back to nerd. not making content and being lazy bums. Thanks for sticking with us for another week. We're going to get some good play time in. Uh, hope you liked it, and good luck to the team that aren't the Patriots in the big sports ball game. Don't forget, everybody. Pur, 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 pur. Cock em, lock em in, rock em. Pum, 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 it's Superb Owl Sunday! Superb Owl? Superb Owl Sunday! <laughs> <laughs>